My addiction started when I was 14 years old. I started smoking marijuana. I didn't think it was an issue. I didn't think I was addicted at that point to anything. What started off as a trial and error process of me just wanting to try other drugs developed my addiction to methamphetamine, which a year later turned into an addiction to opiates. I moved to Seattle to go to college thinking I could get away, like this wasn't a problem, I'll stop doing drugs. But little did I know this was where I fell deeper into my addiction. I ended up getting pregnant. I had to have an abortion. This made me use every day. I couldn't have sober days. I couldn't even face anybody. I couldn't believe what I had done. I was raised in a strict Filipino Catholic culture. Abortions isn't something that's a part of your life. On top of doing drugs, I mean, my shame and my guilt I did not want to deal with them. I wanted to numb everything. I was tired of living this way. I was so depressed. My best friend ended up flying to Seattle saying, hey, you need to get out of this. I called my dad and my dad welcomed me home. He's like, hey, come home. We can get you a job where it, your life can get easier for you. We can support you. So I started working with youth. It was amazing. I was doing so good. I wasn't using. I was drinking here and there with my coworkers and friends. The main thing was I wasn't using. I was like, I can do this, I can be sober. Christmas came around. When it's a time supposed to be happy, you're like things are going great in your life to celebrate, I hit depression hard. I felt like my family didn't want me there. I felt shame. I felt like everyone knew that I was an addict. I felt like all the noises in my head wouldn't stop of my of feeling judged, especially by my community. And rather than, you know, get help, I decided to use again. I found myself with a tin foil, and my friend offered me Oxycontin. And I was telling myself one time, she's gonna take one time just to ease this, these thoughts in my head, like I'm not gonna use again after this. No, that's not how it works, at least not for me. I ended up using really heavy again, behind closed doors. While I had this profession, all of it, I was trying to hide it. As soon as I tried to get better, my brother got shot by a close friend. My brother survived, our close friend killed himself. And that was even a bigger spiral into my addiction. At this point, again, I was using as heavy as I was when I had my abortion. I couldn't have a sober day. This time though, it was a little different. I opened up to my dad I, at Christmas again. I was like, hey, you guys, I'm struggling. I don't know what to do. I decided to get sober and I decided, I looked at my siblings who were so happy. I remember it was Christmas and they were opening their presents for me. And I was like, I wanna enjoy this sober. Like I wanna be able to do this without feeling like everybody knows I'm the addict. They know that I'm gonna leave probably and not come back. Missing important things in my siblings' youth that I'll never have again. This was the start of my actual recovery. January 7th is a day I am so thankful for. The last day I smoked Oxy, I did heroin, hard drugs, all of it was gone. What was the hardest for me was my mental health. My mental health was suffering. I seeked out professional help. This lady was amazing. She was telling me that this is normal. Your brain's trying to heal, but you know, you've been using for a long time and this is something that we can help you with. And a month later, I found myself pregnant. This was like a miracle for me. It helped with my sobriety too. Everything was going really well. I didn't have any issues again. And then I got pregnant with my second child, my daughter. The day before she was born, my best friend shot himself and killed himself. This was big, it put me into labor. I got postpartum depression. I felt really big disconnect with my child. I couldn't grieve my best friend properly. Then I want those thoughts of, I need, I, if I just use, it's, it's gonna get better. But no, I kept reminding myself, no, last time you used, you almost messed up your life. Like, I, don't do this to yourself. Instead of using like I did before, I called my mental health clinician who I hadn't been in sessions with. I've already been fresh out two years from being an outpatient. So I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna call her again. I'm gonna get help. And she helped me through it. She helped me through the mental health stuff I was dealing with. And this was a big moment for me. 
this is a moment where I had so much emotional strain where I would find myself using, I didn't. And now I can say 10 years later, I am sober, I am in recovery. I'm able to go to all my kids' events. I'm able to do all these things where before when I was in, in active use, I would never show my face in public. I would never do these things because I thought people judged me, but in reality, it's because they didn't know how to help me. They could see my pain. They could see what I was going through. But when you're in active use, you don't, you don't think that way. You think everyone's against you. And now I've realized after 10 years later, they all just didn't know how to help me as a kid, and I blocked them out. I was the one who felt the way I thought people felt about me. I was the one who hated myself. I was the one who thought of myself the way I thought people thought. And when I made that revelation, when I knew that this isn't how people think of me, it helped me stay sober. I learned self-care. I learned to accept myself for who I am. I. I'm an addict and I'll always be an addict and I'm not ashamed to say it anymore. I'm an addict in recovery is the key thing I tell people. I will always be an addict. The want will never go away. I just know I can control it now. And that's for me, I, it makes me know that other people, I can give other people hope too.